Hello there, guys. Welcome to episode 8 of How to Program in C++. Today, we're going to be going over logical operators and the comma operator if we have time. So, let's get started. First things first, this is going to be all in the context of if statements today because that's all we've gone over in this kind of area. So, uh, logical operators basically allow you to kind of modify how you use if statements. It allows you to expand on the possibilities, if you will. Uh, each one can interact differently with the operators we have already learned. So, let's make an if. Um, First of all, we're going to make two variables, so I'm going to make them integers, calling them value1 and value2. So we call on at the end of that. And I'm going to give value, oops, one, the value four, yeah. And value2, two, the value2, two, just to confuse everyone with my language. Um, now let's make an if, and the condition is going to be value1 is equal to value 2. And let's just make ourselves a C out so we know if this is working or not. So one will output true and then else uh, output false. So to summarize, if value 1 is equal to value 2, then output true, otherwise output false. All this stuff is things that we've gone over before. Let's just test it to make sure it all works. And yes, indeed, value 1 is not equal to value 2. So, we did go over last time that you can put an exclamation mark in here, and it will be change this into not equal to. And as you can see when we run it, it now returns true. Well, there's kind of another way of doing this not equal to, um, but it's more of a thing, it's it's a thing you can use in more general cases outside of just whether or not something is equal to something. You could check if something is not larger than a certain value or not smaller than a certain value. And this operator is called the logical not operation. Uh, so what is the symbol? Well, it's just an exclamation mark. And you put it in here, right before the condition, uh, but after the bracket. And in order for this to work, you have to put in another set of brackets around the condition that you want to reverse. Okay, let's get that out. Add two brackets, code locks. You're being funky with me. Um, but yes. Uh, so how this works is you have your condition, and you put extra brackets around it, and then you put this not operator before this condition, and the not operator will reverse the outcome. So if this comes out as true, it will now be false, and if this condition comes out as false, it will now come out as true. So, in this case, we've checked if value is equal to value 2, and if that is the case, then return true. And as you can see, they are certainly not equal to each other, but when we run it, it returns true, because we've reversed it with this exclamation mark. Now we can set them both to the same thing, and it will now return false. There we go. Now, I don't know how useful this will seem to you at first, but trust me, it is very useful down the line. Um, let me show this in much simpler terms, which would be to just not really have a condition at all. We're just going to say if true. Uh, so, as you can see, if you put this if true, um, it will always output this statement here. Uh, this is because the if is only checking for a true or false output, and generally the condition in here calculates that, but if you just give it the value true, then it will always be true, the outcome of the if. So let's run it. And yes, it is true. And you could also put false in here, and that would indeed work. This is false. This is completely pointless though, uh, because it defeats the purpose of an if statement. You may as well just take out this line. Um, but this is for proving a point. So now if we put this exclamation mark, or not logical operation not even, uh, at the start, it will now return false. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is the and log logical operation which is very simple, uh, but maybe a little bit difficult to understand at first, I guess. So the way this works is that you can put in more than one condition into your if. And 
with this and logical operation, you find out if they are both true. And if they are both true, it will execute this statement. Otherwise, it will jump to the else. Or if there is no else, it will just continue on as if nothing happened. So let's give an example. Um, uh, you're going to need extra brackets. You've got to put extra brackets around each condition that you put into your if otherwise it will get all confused and not work so our first condition is going to be if value one is larger than two okay so that's that's one condition now i'm going to do a space just so we can read this after the first condition put two ampersands which is the operator the boolean logical operation and and then a space and then two more brackets to encapsulate our second condition and this time I'm gonna say value 2 is larger than 2 so if we run this it should print out this true because both value 2 and value 1 are larger than 2 and it does so what if we make one of them larger than 2 well change that one to 6 and now it returns false because one of them, both of them are not true. Only one of them is true. Now let's make the other one larger, just to show this works both ways. And again, it is false. And finally, if we make them both, both of our conditions return false, it will still return false. So the way to remember this in your head is an AND operation uh, basically checks if bo if it's all or nothing. Either both of these conditions come out true or none of them do. Uh, or the if just comes out false, basically. Uh, you can add on more of these if you like. You can put another am AND operator. And let's put in another condition. Value 2 is larger than uh, 8. So... Are they both larger than 8? No. Uh, well, is value 2 larger than 8? So it'll return false. Now if we put these both to 7, still should be false. Yep. And if we put these, well, value 2 to 8, all three of these conditions are true. Therefore, it will output... Oh, sorry. Should have made that 8 a 9 <laughs> because it's larger than 8. Okay, let's run it again, and yes, all three statements are true, therefore it will return true overall. So, as I say, you can make as many as you want, so feel free to make a huge if statement, but it's probably best for readability that you do not do that. Okay, let's take these out. In fact, let's leave one in just, just now so we can show that you can combine the NOT operator with the AND operator. So, if we put this NOT before the second condition, now we need the second condition to come out false for this AND to come out true. Uh, if you follow the logic. It's gonna get a bit wonky here. This stuff takes practice, so don't worry if you don't understand straight away. Just copy out what I've given you and try and experiment around and see what comes out false and what comes out true. Uh, so in this case, I'm gonna make this condition come out false because four is less than six, um, but therefore we have the not operator, so that will change that from false to true. So both conditions will come out true. And yes, it works. Good, good. Okay, let's get on to our final logical operator of the day, or operation, um, which is gonna be the not, I mean, sorry, the, the or operation. And it works very similar to the and, um, but it's kind of the opposite, I guess. Let, let's try it out. So, Let's take out this not because it could be a little bit confusing. Um, the or operator, basically, it's if any of these values come out as true, the whole condition for the if will be true. If eh, all of them are false, that is the only time that it will come out as false. Okay, let's try and demonstrate this. So, in this case, um, Value 2 is still less than 6, however, value 1 is true. Therefore, 
Well, the first condition is true. Therefore, it comes out as true because one of our conditions is true. So let's make the other one true, but make that one false. So the second condition is now true and it outputs true. Uh, let's make both of them true just to show that off. And it still returns true. And then let's make both of them false. And now we have the only condition where this would come out false. So, now you have that. You can also layer these up as well, but I'm not going to show that because it gets a bit confusing. You can experiment around with that yourself. Let's have a very quick recap just to make sure absolutely certain that you know what's going on using the true and false method that I showed earlier. So, if we have true and true, then it will come out as true. There we go. And if we have false for either of the conditions, when we use this and operator, uh, it will come out false, and it can be either one. And if we have both things being false, it will still come out as false. So with the or operator instead, two falses will equal a false. Um, if we make one true, however, it will come out as true. And if both are true, it will come out as true. Okay. Again, as I say, it is very confusing the first time you learn it, uh, but it gets simpler over time the more you use what I've taught you. All right, guys, uh, that seemed to take much longer than I thought, so we're just going to leave comma operators off till next time. So join me next time when we go over that.